Oh, that's good. So we got ourselves a little spotted salamander here. How you guys doing? Chris Signato here. You are watching Nature Now. Okay, so behind me is a perfect vernal pool for finding reptiles and amphibians. And I guarantee you there's probably some spotted salamanders in this pool as we speak. And right nearby are <laughs> hundreds of wood frogs and spring peepers. Well, those are spotted salamander eggs under that water. But there's a wood frog grabbing it. I find that strange. I must stress that I am trained and very experienced in doing this type of stuff. If you're not careful, you can cause a lot of habitat destruction. So I've got, you know, special tools for the purpose. And, you know, as I said, I'm very careful about this. But we have spotted salamander eggs and not far away are wood frog eggs. And you can tell a difference. The wood frog eggs kind of look like a cluster of grapes, especially when they're a day or two old. Really clear, glassy looking. And then they start to get a bit cloudy and dirty. The spotted salamander eggs, after a couple of days, get very milky. And it looks like the cluster of grapes has been wrapped in cellophane. And you can see a set right there, a, a clutch. That's what you call a group of eggs. So uh, I can't wait to uh, explore a bit more. Got a bunch of turkey feathers here. And look at that. Breastplate of a turkey, I suppose. Or is that? That's got to be the breast. Yeah, there's all the bones underneath. Look at that. Oh, some uh, slug eggs. Another red bath. These guys are everywhere today. Well, under many of the logs, under lots of the rocks but further away from the vernal pools. So, I'm finding lots of northern redback salamanders under rocks and logs. We've got tons of wood frogs over there, lots of spring peepers, and I am sure there are spotted salamanders hiding about. We may or may not find one today, but I definitely found their eggs. Hold on a second, that's a 5-0. I found spotted salamander eggs. And, and wood frog eggs and stuff. I'm sure there's more, but I wanted to wait for you. Okay, sorry, it took so long. It took me a good 45 minutes. I didn't think you'd be here so soon. I thought it would take you about 45. Yeah, I didn't realize how close it was. I was like, oh yeah, this is right, right next to me. I used to come out here. <laughs> Heather. Yeah? What's that sound? Wood frogs. It is, where are they? somewhere. Cool. I hope we see some. Do you want to see some? Yeah, of course. I've never seen them in person. They're fun. So the reason the amphibians breed at this time of year so early, you know, at the end of winter and the very beginning of spring, so if they get a head start on the season, these uh, wood frogs and spring peepers are very cold tolerant. They have an antifreeze in their blood, you know, in their livers that allows them to actually be above the frost line when it occurs. You know, other frogs and things will die, especially once those water crystals expand and the, you know, or the cells run out of water, you know, destroy the membranes. These species can handle that and it allows them to lay their eggs, capitalize on the food source, and spend as much time as possible as tadpoles before those pools dry up. Other species might not be so lucky. So here we go, here's a little wood frog. Cool thing about wood frogs is, they're one of the few species of frog in the world that have that antifreeze in their blood. Now, a characteristic marking on wood frogs is this dark patch in front of and behind their eye. You can't really tell on this little fella because the whole body gets dark when they're wet like this. 
But after the breeding season, they'll go up into the woodlands, up to a thousand feet from their vernal pools, and spend the rest of the year living in the woodlands. Hence the term wood frog. Uh, I found a spotted salamander. You found? Yeah, I rolled this log as you oh, can tell. Oh my god. <laughs> You're not the one holding it up. Oh. Uh, did you like my deduction? That we yeah. won't say on film? That was smart, wasn't yeah. it? Do you think that's really the case or Maybe. is it a coincidence? I don't know. Can you grab it? Yeah. I gotta wet my hands. He's a little one. Yeah. Can I return this log down? Yes, ma'am. Little spotted salamander. Yeah. It's like half of the size of the one we found last year. Oh, yeah. Is it okay? Yeah. Ambistoma maculatum. So we've got ourselves a little spotted salamander here. So it's good habitat. We knew we'd find them out here. There's been some egg clutches, you know, good vernal pools. And he's on the roll. On the move, oh. I mean. <laughs> we've got another spotted salamander. And this one is uh, away from the water, under a log. So whenever I'm dealing with amphibians, I always take a little bit of the water from where they are and I keep pouring it on them if I'm filming them or taking pictures or anything like that because they obviously need a lot of moisture just to stay alive. Their skin needs it. If they dry out, it's not good for them. So, uh, awesome, you know, and another spotted salamander. got a lone peeper over there. Now the, the spotted salamanders are part of the mole salamander group, which means they spend most of their time underground. They come out to these pools to breed, you know, to mate and reproduce, and then they go back into the landscape under the ground, under, you know, rocks and logs, sometimes inside the logs, but often several feet under the ground. I saw some kind of bug. Some kind of bug? bug. Was it a bug? Oh, really? Oh, I want to go back to that pool with the diving beetle and the whirly gigs. There were some big diving beetles. Bunch of wood frog eggs. Not that you can tell. So there you have it. You know, lots of wood frog eggs, lots of spotted salamander eggs, tons of vernal pools, you know, micro and macro invertebrates all over in these, these pools. And it was just a lot of fun. Saw a lot of frogs and we even saw spotted salamanders. So, you know, pretty cool stuff. Hope you guys enjoyed. And if you guys heard the vernal pools, please be safe. Don't get hit by any cars and replace the habitat. Do not flip a log and not put it back. Make sure you put it back right where it came from and make sure you're not trespassing. So thanks a lot for watching. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. Thanks a lot for watching. And remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspire spirit.